ready or not. Yo, what's up, family? Hello. Hey, hey, hey. 6.30, Thursday. Time to get a little shot, but what's happening with you? Hope you're doing good, having a good week so far. Um, staying on your post, staying on your grind. Keep pushing, keep pushing, don't quit. Uh, before we get into it and uh, do what we do, um, first of all, I got to tell everyone, thank you. I try to respond, um, but it's almost impossible. Uh, <laughs> so we'll try to respond to tell everybody thank you for the many anniversary blessings and love shown for our 24th anniversary. And also everybody that wished my wife a happy birthday. Um, we we'll just want to say thank you. And um, and then, of course, I have to tell everyone, thank you again um, for uh, me moving into presidency of TNBA. So everybody's well wishes and thank yous and uh, continued prayers. Uh, we need them. All right. So just want to say thank you. Um, so, you, yeah, 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 that's right. Mm -hmm. So um, something we want to talk about um, and we're going to dive into it here in a little bit. But as we always do, let's go. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. All right. All right. So let's go. Let's go with it. So um, something that I you know, was in church the other day and something that I heard that I felt like I needed to uh, I felt directed to talk about this today because it's been on my mind ever since. And um, hopefully you're able to receive what we're talking about today. But uh, I, what I want is my wife to she has a kind of a couple verses and then we're going to dive into this thing and. Of course, she gonna feed, fit, fit. She gonna feed in there whenever she get ready, and she feel led to feed in there. But uh, um, yeah, I just want to. Let's just go ahead and jump into the verse. We got a few scriptures we want to talk about today, but uh, let's go ahead and jump into the first one. We got All right, it. sure. It's um, Second Corinthians, chapter nine, verse seven. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. Mm -hmm. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Mm -hmm. And God will generously provide all you need. Yeah. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scripture says, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. There we go. That's the New Testament version. Now I want her to flip over to the Old Testament. There was another scripture I want her to read. And this scripture, you probably, now this is coming from the uh, uh, the uh, New International, not New International Version. I forget that. It's, it's not the King James Version. Okay, let me just say that. All right. So this might come off a little differently, but I think you're going to just get the gist of it. And as soon as you said uh, the chapter and verse, you're probably going to recognize it. But go with it, baby. Oh, this is Malachi, and mm -hmm. this is the New Living Translation. New Living Translation. That's what okay. I can Okay, And um, it's uh, Malachi. I'll, I'll chapter start three. With, okay. Chapter three. And yeah, we'll chapter start at three. number seven, verse seven. Start at seven. Okay, yeah. great. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. Now return to me and I will return to you, said, says the Lord of heaven's army. But you ask, how can we return when we have never gone away? Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse for your whole nation has been cheating me. Mm -hmm. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse mm -hmm. so there will be, uh, will be enough food in mm -hmm. my temple. Mm -hmm. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's army, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. You want me to keep going? Oh, did you right hear that through 12? Oh, no. Oh. Your 12. crops will be abundant, for mm -hmm. I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Then all nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of heaven's army. So in the Bible, there's over 2,100 verses 
that speak in some way, shape, or form about a giving. Okay? Um, how you handle the giving. Um, you know, being steward over it. Being stewardship, right? So the Bible talks about it a whole lot. So I just picked these two scriptures right here because they are um, rather familiar scriptures. Uh, I wanted to get one from the New Testament, one from the Old Testament. I want her to read the New Testament first and then the Old Testament. And one reason why I wanted to do that is because I want you to also understand something. Christ came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. Okay? Which is one reason why we celebrate Jesus Christ, simply because without him, there is no way possible we could uphold the standards and the laws in the Old Testament. Okay? We couldn't do it. Okay? That's why a lot of folk crashed and burned in the Old Testament, because they could not keep up with the word. They could not keep up with the law. So Jesus Christ came so that he could fulfill the law on our behalf. So that's why we covered on his grace, on his mercy, on his blood, because of the fact that he gave his life for us. Now, I know everybody don't agree with that, but that's what we agree with. That's what we rock with here. OK, I'm just being honest with you. that's how we get down. OK, we believe Jesus Christ here. But. I also wanted to go here with that scripture, because a lot of people believe that because of Jesus Christ coming and fulfilling the law that we don't live under that law anymore. It's not so much that we live under the law. It's about us giving consistent effort. The principles of the law is not gone. Like if that was the case where we don't live under the law of, of the Old Testament, that means thou should not kill no longer applies, which means we can go out here and do whatever we want to do. And we know that ain't right. We know we can't do that. Right. So the principles in the Old Testament still stand true today. OK. And so because they stand true, when we get to this Malachi chapter three, this one, this is a verse right here that some folk. They, 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 it, 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 it has a little controversy behind it because a lot of folk don't understand it, don't agree with it. I shouldn't say they don't agree with it. It's, it's a, because it's an Old Testament. They don't believe that you have to do what that says per se. But yes, you do. The principle of giving is still in play. And then the other thing is you, you have to read the entire thing. Don't just read one or two scriptures because you miss the context behind it. That's the reason why I asked her to read verses 7 through 12 because there's a whole lot in there. And it's a, if you do this, then this is what happens, right? It's a give take. It's if then. Right. Ain't that English class? If then. There you go. Them if then statements. If you do this, then this will happen. Right. So he's trying to bless you. But you got to do something to get it. You can't just say, hey, I, my name is Ron Sims and I, I, I exist. So bless me. No, it don't work like that. You got to do something to get something. Right. You got to give to get one of my favorite quotes that I love to say from Didi on what's happening back in the day. You got to give to get. And that's exactly what he's telling us right here. And it's mentioned so many times in the Bible. And, and, and so I just want us to understand that in the Old Testament, we, those, the principles of Scripture still hold true. And we have to give consistent effort. And giving is one of those efforts we have to give. You have something you want to say, babe? Um, well, just basically... Um I've always been a giver and um, give ties most of the time. No, <laughs> well, be real. you know, It'll be real. you know, when we get to that teenage <laughs> year, you know, we think we well, don't have to do that, but we always brought back to that. But, um, and I am, I'm not going to tell my age cause I'm sure Ron is going to tell you, but <laughs> in all these years that I've been living, um, she don't look God has always provided. He has always provided. Yes. And um, I, I can talk about what I know. I know that he has provided. Um, even now, right now, we may be going through a little um, financial rough time, but mm -hmm. 
God is providing during this time. Yes. I put on yes. 10 pounds going through this financial <laughs> rough time. That's because people continue to feed me. <laughs> the refrigerator is full and the freezer is full. People continue to send me food and invite us over to different events and parties where we have food and yeah. <laughs> I'm just eating so much, you know, and um, our house looked completely different because people are giving us furniture. Yeah. You know, we got yeah. all new stuff. People are just given to us and yeah. um, they give us clothes and they give us uh, money and everything like that. So, um, you know, again, I could just only speak about what I know in my life and the principles of giving in all the times that I face adversity or challenges mm -hmm. or, um, you know, financial situations, et cetera. God has always provided. Um, he has never forsaken me. He has never left me. Yes. Oh, so uh, I want to also say this, um, Matthew 5, 17, that's where that scripture came. Uh, I don't want you to think that I was saying that. I want you to know <laughs> that that one about Christ came to um, uphold the law or fulfill the law, uh, not abolish the law. That comes from uh, Matthew 5, 17. But, um, you have to, it said, give him a try. Give him a try. He can prove, he, he will prove himself to you. You give him a try, but it still comes down to you having to give. When he, it blesses you with the increase. You have to give. And it's not just about money. You get increased with, with, with wisdom. You get increased with knowledge. You get increased with um, uh, time, opportunity. And you give that back. And you're giving it freely. You're giving it cheerfully. That's the, that's another reason why I wanted to read that New Testament scripture is because you don't want to give it and feel some kind of way about doing it. You know, you don't want to be giving it and be like, oh, Lord, what they go. You, you don't really want to give it. Right. And so what made me think about this also, and I'm going I'm to I'm a, I'm a go here. I'm going I'm to go here. Um, and, 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 you know. A couple of questions. So how much should I give? The scriptures told you how much you feel like you should give. OK, there is no set amount. OK, but whatever you give, you want to give it cheerfully. You don't want to give it grudgingly. You don't want to give it feeling like uh, they're going to mess up. They're going to do something with it. If you feel like that, then you don't give it. Don't give it. OK, because that's not going to do you or anybody any good. To get, like, do you really want somebody to give you something and then they're going to be like giving you this, 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 how I want to say it. They just they just nasty about giving it to you. Like they don't even really want to give it to you, but they giving it to you anyway, just because they, they don't even know why they're giving it to you. They're going to give it to you, but they really don't want to. Do it. And you don't really want to take it because they don't really want to give it to you. So do you really want it? Right. So it's the same. It's the same thing here. But I also got to go here because I, I, what, what made me think about this was at church. And one of the I, I got to talk about the church for a second when it comes to this giving thing. I have to talk about it uh, because um, we, we like to look at what's happening in the churches nowadays. And there's some foolishness out here. It's some no show enough, no doubt about it. Foods that's going on out here. OK. And unfortunately, with some of the foods, it it, it kind of overshadows the church as a whole. OK. And how they say a few bad apples spoil a bunch. Unfortunately, we have a lot of that going on out here nowadays where you have a few bad apples out here that's making it look like the whole church and all the churches are bad. That's not the case. OK. But. One thing that has to happen is that we do have to give. We do have to give to the church because why is it important that we give to the church? Because that's the place that we can go to. OK, it's a place that a lot of us know about it. OK, we don't been there, done that. We don't been to somebody's church before. Now, if we don't take care of the church, then where do we have to go? Right now, is it all about the four walls church? No, because that's just a building, but it is a sacred place that's important for us to get what we need. 
Sometimes when we just need some encouragement, sometimes we just need a word. Sometimes we need to hear somebody that know how to sing, that just does something for us and it just excites us and it gets us amped up or it, it encourages us something. But we get it from church. Even, even y'all that don't go to church, you know, been to church for a funeral. Now, just where do you want to have a funeral now have church? Right. So giving to the church is important. Now, if you feel like the church that you normally would give to. And you ain't feeling you feeling some type of way about that church. Well, guess what? There's other churches. There's other places. There's other organizations, nonprofit organizations. There are other places that you can give. The bottom line is what the Bible says. You got to give. You get that increase, you got to give. Tithing is just a tenth of what you receive. So if you got 10 loaves of bread, give one to somebody else. You, you ain't going to go bad anyway. You can't do nothing with all nine loaves of bread, all 10. Give one of them to somebody, okay? But I just, I, I, we have to talk about this because, again, we forget that the church is important. The Four Walls Church is important, okay? It is a place that we can go when we are in need, okay? Even if you don't go to church, it's still important to give to the church simply because what if you got that funeral, just like I just talked about? You got that funeral, right? Okay? But all of the church, because it's a place that we can come together, we can encourage each other, we can get some strength, we can get something that we need to get through the rest of the week, right? It's something to get through the, the rest of the day for some of us, right? It's a place that it, it's, it, it's uh, full of encouragement. But if we don't take and give to that church, where do we go? So I do need to speak about that. And, and, and if, again, we look at, and I got to talk about those churches that, because it, it, it unfortunately, the few bad apples spoil the bunch. Some of those churches, no doubt, if you feel like that's not the church that you need to give to, then don't do it. Find somewhere else. Promise you. Promise you there's another church. You know, there's, it didn't say you got to give to Ebenezer, AME, Zion Baptist, uh, Episcopalian, uh, you know, Roman Catholic of our Lord Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints Church. No. You ain't, there's plenty of other churches you can give to. Okay. Just don't think you've got that one you have to get to because that's, that's where you, that's the only church you've known all your life. For some of us, it's probably time that we find somewhere else to go anyway. Okay? You probably need to go and find somewhere that you can feel comfortable in, that you feel like you can grow, that you feel like you can get what you need when you go. But if you just go to church and just and you, you don't get anything out of it, then you probably might not be at the place that you need to be. But we still have to do what the word says, because if you do what the word tells you to do, he's telling you, I'm going to bless you. His word would never return void. I promise you, he got you. I tell you every week, but you got to give to get. He's telling you what you need to do. Read Malachi, not just those two verses. Read the whole thing, Malachi. Matter of fact, there was some more juicy stuff at the bottom of Malachi that we might touch on a later date. But I just need you to understand that I heard this in church and I just felt like we need to talk about this giving thing because some of our blessings are, uh, 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 we haven't gotten what's out here for us because we simply are holding on tight to what we have and not giving it. Now, he said give it all. He didn't tell you to give it all. He said talk about giving the first fruits. Okay. You give what your heart desires, what you feel like you need to give. But what, as your man soweth, so does he reap, right? So you have to, the, the principle, the main gist of today's story, today's whatever you call this thing that we do on Thursdays, you got to give. You give, you get. He said it in his word. His word would not return void. And so you wonder why your business is not growing. You wonder why you just can't seem to get over the hump. It might be because you holding on too tight to what you already have instead of giving away some of that to help others so that he can bless you even more. You give, you get. That's the way it is. All right. Have anything back? No, that's it. All right, guys. Well, we out. Hopefully you got this.
I need, need you to be better tomorrow than you were today. But you was already good today. All right? Just be better tomorrow. Keep pushing. Don't forget. Pray, plan, prepare, proceed. Let's go make it do what it do. We see you next week at 630. Love you. Appreciate you. Take care.